Stephanie, Stephanie, Stephanie. Sometimes I'll be watching the news or reading a book and someone, usually a man, will say something like, we attempted to besiege the castle, sir, but their fortress was impregnable. Or, we tried to convert the people, sir, but the beliefs of the natives is impregnable. Or my favorite, true courage is a result of reasoning, but a brave mind is always impregnable. Like they know what impregnable is. Like you know what impregnable is. You know what's impregnable, Stephanie? Me. I'm fucking impregnable. In fact, let me tell you just how impregnable I am. Three miscarriages, two ectopic pregnancies, followed by the cauterization of my fallopian tubes. Yes, they had to burn my tubes shut. That's how fucking impregnable I am. Now, I come from a huge family, and I'm not talking about 2.5 kids suburban bullshit huge. I'm talking about huge. I'm talking about family reunions where you don't know everybody. I'm talking about eight different shades of lipstick on your cheeks from your aunt kissing you when you visited grandma's house for Christmas huge. I'm talking two full roster teams when we had our annual Thanksgiving Day flag football game. Get it, Stephanie? Huge. The women in my family were built for babies, and I didn't think I was any different. Why would I be different? Why would God make me different? But after enough trial and error, after enough loss, I knew I was different. I knew that it was gonna be difficult for me to even get pregnant, let alone carry a baby to term. So I did what anybody in my family would do if they found that they couldn't have a baby. I prayed. And I'm not talking going to church on Sundays, nibbling on a wafer, asking God if he wouldn't mind giving me a baby praying. I'm talking about praying. I'm talking about having people lay hands on my empty belly praying. I'm talking about joining an infertility group and prayer circle that met at Denny's on Tuesday nights praying. I'm talking about rededicating myself every month, just in case God didn't think I was praying enough praying. I prayed so much that every breath I took was a prayer. My God was vast, infinite. I saw God in a, a badly designed waiting room with uncomfortable chairs or in an ugly exam room, even in a pipette holding my most precious assets. I put all my hopes into medicine because I had seen real miracles there. But my miracle didn't happen. And now it never will. Ever since the day I was willed, newly sterilized from the hospital, I've tried to reconcile my belief in God and my belief in prayer and in the power of medicine. With this gaping hole in my existence, my childless existence, and let me tell you, Stephanie, it has not been easy. Nights awake, crying on my husband's strong shoulders, sitting in it empty room, now an office, where during my first cautionary pregnancy, I had the walls painted a sky blue, good for a boy or a girl. I became so focused on what I was missing that I didn't see what I had done to my marriage and what you were doing with my husband. Did he ever tell you how he told me, Stephanie? How he sat me down at dinner at our restaurant and whispered, I have something to tell you. <laughs> and I knew he was leaving me. He whispered, you're gonna hate me. No, I said, no, you won't forgive me. No, I said, no, I have to stop, stop. I'm gonna be a father. Whew. I didn't see that one coming. Did you hear me? He said, Sheila, I'm gonna be a father. I'm sorry, but I'd heard him very clearly and I had already begun to pray. I couldn't pray for you to lose the baby or for my husband to want to come back to me. Instead, I prayed that the baby you were to bear would be the size of a watermelon. And I'm not talking about a sweet, dainty, seedless little watermelon that you buy at the grocery store watermelon. I'm talking about at least 10 pounds, 25 inches, making you as fat as Oprah in the 90s, only to have you push it out of your exhausted body, making your lips the size of dog ears making you wide enough for a Mack truck to go through. Then I stopped for a moment and I prayed that his size would reflect its health, that this baby 
would have the healthiest set of lungs to scream for you. Oh, and a healthy sense of defiance to make its childhood and adolescence extra hard for you both. And I looked up at him through my tears and the beating of my broken heart. Sheila, he said, are, are you all right? I said I was, and I was praying. He rolled his eyes. Hmm. I said, I'm praying for your baby. His face softened. Thank you, he said, thank you. And then he grasped my hands and started softly sobbing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The next few days came and went, and most of the time I prayed for your baby. And then finally I stopped praying for you and started praying for me, for strength, for courage, for an impregnable spirit to support this impregnable body. After all these years of unanswered prayers, miraculously, amazingly, I felt strong and brave and completely unbreakable. And finally, my miracle came in the form of a phone call from our mutual mother-in-law. She told me that you had twins. <laughs> and that they were very big and very healthy, and you were very, very tired. But not as tired as you're going to be. <laughs> Maybe God was listening after all. <laughs>